Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Mueller corruption scandal breaks wide open, look what crime he buried for Obama. News has been breaking of Russia-connected corruption within the U.S. government. But, surprise, surprise, it has nothing to do with Donald Trump and everything to do with Barack Obama. Apparently, as Obama's administration was approving a titanic deal to give Russian companies stack in U.S. uranium, the same Russian individuals were engaged in all sorts of nefarious behavior, corruption, bribery, and various underhanded activities. We never learned about it, because it appears the FBI at the time was covering it up. And who was responsible for the cover-up? Oh, just the guy leading the Russian investigate today. Robert Mueller, who is the special counsel in charge of the Russia investigation, oversaw the FBI when the agency allegedly hid evidence it had collected that shows that Russian officials were engaged in a bribery scheme aimed at growing their atomic energy business inside the United States. The details were outlined in a report on Tuesday which shows that the evidence was withheld even from lawmakers as they questioned the Obama administration's approval of the sale of uranium-1 to Russia's Rosatom, which led to Russia controlling 20 percent of U.S. uranium. Former Rep. Mike Rogers, Army, who chaired the House Intelligence Committee during the time the FBI probe was being conducted, told The Hill that he was never made aware of anything regarding Russian nuclear corruption though many of his fellow lawmakers were concerned about the deal, which was also approved by Hillary Clinton's State Department. The Russian efforts to manipulate our American political enterprise is breathtaking. Wow, this is really looking bad for everyone involved. Obama, Clinton, Mueller are all in a big pot of corruption stew. Why were these charges covered up? Because they didn't want the deal to get nixed by Congress. So Mueller's people, during Obama's authority, hid the evidence to protect the deal. That's pretty shady, to me. It suggests that the administration, and those working for it and the FBI, were all but complicit in the bribery scheme. Perhaps they were beneficiaries of bribery? How can we know, since it was covered up? All this should lead to an investigation by Congress over just what went on back then. I had a hard time believing nobody will be prosecuted over this revelation. I guess we'll have to wait and see. City with highest per capita murder rate starts defense fund for legal aliens. Less than a year after Baltimore prosecutors ordered staff not to charge illegal immigrants with minor, nonviolent crimes because it could get the offenders deported. Maryland's largest city will hire immigration attorneys to help those facing removal. It's important to note that Baltimore has the nation's highest per capita homicide rate and has been coined the deadliest big city in the United States by a mainstream newspaper. Nevertheless, a city panel approved spending $200,000 this month to pay for lawyers to represent illegal aliens with deportation orders. Baltimore Mayor Catherine Pugh says in a local news report that the goal is for everyone to get due process. We're not making a decision as to their status, we're making the decision to be supportive of individuals who live in our city, according to the mayor. Unlike the criminal justice system, in immigration court the government doesn't offer free lawyers to those who can't afford them. This means that illegal aliens who don't have the money to pay for one must represent themselves in legal proceedings or rely on volunteer attorneys or paralegals provided by immigrant rights groups. This leaves many illegal aliens in removal proceedings without adequate legal representation. The trend of using taxpayer dollars to assist illegal aliens in deportation proceedings started under the Obama administration. In 2015, the former president allocated $2 million to hire attorneys to represent the influx of illegal alien minors in federal immigration proceedings. The money flowed through a special program, Justice AmeriCorps, launched by the Department of Justice, DOJ, Executive Office for Immigration Review, EOR. In response to the Trump administration's immigration enforcement policies, 
American sanctuary cities took matters into their own hands by creating local funds to help illegal aliens facing deportation. Chicago's city council led the way by approving a $1.3 million legal defense fund and the city of Los Angeles followed with a $10 million fund to help illegal immigrants dodge justice. Shortly after the city announced its special immigrant legal project, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors offered to kick in another $3 million to provide more lawyers. The only L.A. County supervisor who voted against the fund said it's irresponsible to allocate taxpayer money for such a program. In the city's case, the city attorney, whose office prosecutes crimes and represents L.A. in litigation, said the money will ensure that there is more fairness and more effectiveness in the immigration system, which, of course, is a federal and not a state matter. Baltimore took it a step further by also creating a policy to go easy on alien criminals in state cases to avert collateral immigration consequences. An internal memo issued by Baltimore's chief deputy state's attorney in mid-2017 instructs prosecutors to think twice before charging illegal immigrants with minor, nonviolent crimes. The chief deputy, Michael Satzow, writes in the memo that the Trump administration's deportation efforts have increased the potential collateral consequences to certain immigrants of minor, nonviolent criminal conduct. Satsa was second in command to Baltimore's top prosecutor, Marilyn Mosby, and oversees major crimes at the state agency. In considering the appropriate disposition of a minor, nonviolent criminal case, please be certain to consider those potential consequences to the victim, witnesses, and the defendant, Satsell wrote to his staff. Besides Baltimore, two Maryland counties, Montgomery and Prince George's, offer illegal immigrants sanctuary. When the Trump administration announced it would enforce immigration laws, Baltimore Mayor Pew reiterated that police and other public agencies in her city never ask about immigration status. We are a welcoming city, the mayor said in a local news report. We want everyone here. We want to be able to provide opportunities and jobs and careers for folks. That's where we are in Baltimore. This year Maryland legislators tried to pass a measure to make the state an official illegal alien sanctuary but the bill, known as the Trust Act, hit a roadblock in a Senate committee after passing in the House of Delegates and the governor has vowed to veto it even if it survives. Kimmel hoped this clip would stay hidden, and it's on race, not sex. James Christian Kimmel was born in Brooklyn on November 13, 1967. Roughly 30 years later, he rose to fame by making women feel things he stuck in his pants and making double entendres regarding women in scantily clad outfits. Now he hosts the last place show in the late night TV ratings in which he cries a lot about guns, Obamacare. Republicans and anything to the left of Elizabeth Warren's position papers. This career trajectory, somehow, has qualified him to host the Oscars not once but twice. Unfortunately, without the Juggies or the Crying Jags, America just isn't quite as interested in Mr. Kimmel's antics. Last Sunday's anti Trump Oscars were the lowest rated edition of the awards broadcast in its history, down double digits percentage wise from Kimmel's last outing. All the while, Kimmel has endured criticism for hosting the first post-Weinstein Oscars after his antics on The Man Show, mostly of the sexual harassment variety. However, now that America is done being slightly outraged over the fact that Kimmel made his name off of raging sexism, they've also remembered he made his name off of raging racism, too. See, one of the common skits on The Man Show involved making fun of Carl Malone, the NBA Hall of Famer who was then in the twilight of his illustrious career with the Utah Jazz. The thing about Malone was that, although a relatively intelligent man, he was also an individual without a filter. Think Donald Trump without handlers. That's kind of the guy he was, and it was funny. It was also something that an enterprising comedian could easily make fun of. The thing was that for all his liberalism, Kimmel's Man Show wasn't exactly known for any sort of commitment to diversity. There weren't a whole lot of black male performers on the show. Yet, Kimmel and co. still wanted to have some fun at Malone's expense. So, 
Kennel did what any comedian would have done. And by what any comedian would have done what I mean is what any minstrel show performer taking the stage in Shreveport, Louisiana back in 1892 would have done, Kennel decided to appear in blackface and talk in pidgin English. Hilarious. Those simple black folks are scared of aliens sticking things up their hindquarters, and that's funny. Oh, by the way, all you Americans better keep the onerous individual mandate in Obamacare because I'm a moral authority and I said so, damn it. Now, I've said it before and I've said it again talking about Kimmel's time with a man show. All he has to do is issue the most epic non-apology apology and I think most people would be willing to let this slide. Many people have done things to make money and advance our careers that, looking back with a certain degree of maturity, they wouldn't have done. In the entertainment industry, this is especially prevalent. However, Kimball hasn't even issued a desultory, well, I guess that wasn't the best idea, even though he was one of the show's creators and wrote many of the offensive skits in question. Given this, we kind of have to assume that America's new moral comedic authority is pretty much okay with blackface and sexual harassment, because he's a, done it and b, refuses to apologize for it. This is liberal America's new conscience. Why are we not surprised? Joy Behar and The View don't mind losing Christian viewers, so stop watching. Shareholders of the parents company to ABC and The View are now demanding action from CEO Bob Iger after Joy Behar has skipped punishment for making nasty comments about Christians while appearing on her panel talk show. While Joy has been specifically attacking Christians, the overlap between the two groups includes a great deal of scripture and belief. Attacking certain Christian beliefs also attacks Jews and even Muslims if you apply her comments on Jesus to the prophets. We first reported last month that Joy Behar, on a February 13, 2018 episode of The View described talking to Jesus as a part of mental illness. It's one thing to talk to Jesus, another thing when Jesus talks, back, to you. The comments studded a series of insults against Vice President Mike Pence who has been very open with his beliefs. Later, Pence responded to Joy's comments. I'd like to laugh about it but I really can apostrophe t. It's an insult, not to me, but to the vast majority of American people who, like me, cherish their faith. It demonstrates how out of touch some in the mainstream media are with the faith and values of the American people. ABC is doing nothing. According to one source at ABC willing to speak across the aisle to Fox, ABC is doing absolutely nothing about this. During a meeting with shareholders, Disney boss and emperor of ABC Bob Iger had to defend himself for not forcing his employee to apologize for her nasty comments. In response to the demands, Iger said at a shareholder meeting that Better had already apologized directly to Pence. According to reports, Iger was irritated and dismissive of the shareholder and cut him off during their exchange. Producers in the wings shut down Megan. Generally we can look forward to Meghan McCain putting up a reasonable defense of conservative and religious values, even if she goes a bit too far protecting her dearest daddy from that big meanie Trump. A few weeks ago, Whoopi took over the conversation when Meghan McCain let the comments go for a few days and decided to say her piece. I've had a very hard time over the last two days with this. I think we are living in an incredibly divisive time right now. As a Republican, I feel like sometimes liberals say we need to be tolerant to everyone. Except pro-lifers, except Trump supporters, except gun owners, except for everyone in the red in the middle of the country. That's when she was cut off by Whoopi, who looked over to the producers in the wings when she explained why she was putting the kibosh on the demand for an apology. I'm going to stop you because that's not actually true. We don't want to talk about liberals and what they're doing. I'm trying to get out of this because this is what Dave, Whoopi looks backstage, asked me to do. So, if you could do it sort of quickly. Unacceptable. Joy would vote for a rapist murderer. In 2016, one month before the election of Donald J. Trump, 
the left wing media were in full meltdown mode and Joy Behar took to The View to defend that liberals would always vote for men including Bill Clinton and Ted Kennedy. Their past doesn't matter, but their politics do. Republicans have voted against the Violence Against Women Act. Now, that to me, is more important than anything that Bill Clinton did or didn't do because it's what she's going to vote for. When she was prompted with the names of victims including Juanita Broderick, Beher did not care. Keep calling. All of us together can show the network and the show that we want action on Joy's comments. You can either click here to ABC's website to find their complaints page or you can directly call their customer care line at 800-230-0229. Be nice to the person taking your phone call, but make it clear that you are no longer tuning into The View specifically because of Joy Bahar's comments. Directly contacting the network is the only way to make all of our voices heard.